If someone approached you in 2013 and told you that psychedelic drugs would be in the mainstream, you'd either think they're incredibly naive or incredibly optimistic. Now, a decade later, we have rising public sentiment, regulatory acceptance, and novel drug discovery, creating an increasingly favorable environment for psychedelic drugs. James Lantier, CEO of Mindset Pharma, is here to join us to give us his view on the psychedelic market and what's in store for his company in the new year. James, can you give us a quick review of your company last year? We saw a lot of activities in terms of partnership and drug discovery. So uh, 2022 was really a, a, a credible sort of foundational year for Mindset. I would say by the end of the year, Mindset had really established itself as the premier biotech company working on novel drugs, novel psychedelic therapeutics. We call it, sometimes we call them second or third generation, but essentially new drugs that are, you know, inspired by, uh, by known psychedelic drugs where we've tried to optimize them and make them better and more tolerable for, for patients. So the reason why I say, I think 2022 was really kind of the year where we, you know, cemented that leadership position is that at the beginning of the year, we announced a collaboration with uh, Otsuka, the development arm of Otsuka Pharmaceuticals. So Otsuka is a global uh, leader in uh, psych psychiatry drugs. And this was the first partnership of its kind in the space, the first uh, collaboration between a big pharma and, uh, and a biotech working on new drugs. That partnership has moved, you know, incredibly well. We, um, in the fall, we announced uh, some that we selected some leads from uh, one of the two families that we're working on with them, and have moved those into what are called IND enabling studies. IND enabling studies are just the the sort of last stop uh, that you need to make, uh, before you move, uh, or you can move into, uh, human trials. So it's a, that that's a essentially a great indication of kind of how far, uh, that program has, has moved forward. And around the same time in the fall, we also announced another deal, uh, with, so it's the second deal, um, with Cybin. Cybin is a psychedelic biotech, um, with, a more of a develop focus on development. And this, I think, was a great deal. Um, we were able to license uh, a subset of our compounds that we weren't working on. And Cybin paid Mindset and uh, an upfront payment. And then if Cybin keeps advancing these compounds, Mindset's eligible for up to nine and a half million in um, milestone payments plus uh, a royalty if they commercialize the drug. So uh, another, you know, great deal along the way, we also had some patents, um, get issued and some notices of allowance really sort of shores up our IP position. And then I think if 2022 was kind of the year where we really were able to prove that we were or show that, you know, we were, we are, um, the top biotech company in the, in the field, this year, 2023, is is going to be the year where we really move a number of at least one program, if not more, to to clinical study. So, and and really kind of make that key um, hit that inflection point of becoming a clinical stage, you know, company with drugs and human trials, which is obviously a huge, you know, huge step forward. Right. So James, we've seen a divergence between the valuations of company and the real value in the psychedelic space. Can we get some of your thoughts on how the environment is shaping up here? Yeah, it, it's, um, it's really fascinating. It's, it's been sort of a, a tale of two cities, so to speak, you know, on, on the one hand, uh, the, all of everything that the medical psychedelic space is is built on is are, are, are you know clinical trials positive results moving drugs forward through the regulatory process all of that in 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 2022 was was great and 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 has continued to be great moving into uh moving into this year you know just recently um maps which is the the group that's focused on advancing MDMA? They announced some positive data um, in last year, the fall. Uh, uh, you know, there was some positive, uh, really positive phase three data 
around psilocybin. Um, there's obviously the big form pharma endorsement of the space with, you know, mindsets deal with Otsuka. So everything is moving, you know, forward. And I think this is going to be in hindsight, kind of one of these moments in time where it's it's clear that that there was like a, a, a total, you know, total dissonance in the market where, you know, the, 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 the programs that are performing really well, and then investors were funding, um, you know, are are not are really trading at a significant discount, for, uh, you know, from where they were before. Because I, you know, I think unfortunately, you know, the the psychedelic biotech sector has gotten, um, you know, thrown out with the bathwater, so to speak, along with the, like the wider biotech and then even wider, you know, um, growth sectors. So. This will this will reverse itself at at a at a certain point in time. It always does. Psychedelic, you know the 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 science and the data supporting the medical use of uh, psychedelic drugs is is really strong and it and it keeps getting stronger. Um and and the mar- the patient groups that these drugs address are huge and growing. So all of that base case um, fundamentals are all positive. Psychedelics were never going to be cannabis, but they don't have to be cannabis to be a very large market in, you know, in their own right. And that all the indicators are suggesting that that's the direction this is headed. And speaking of indicators, we've often heard you say that a novel psychedelic drug just isn't enough. Can you contrast the difference between first generation drugs and second generation drugs? So just to be clear, what we mean by by first generation drugs, what, what we refer to or what, what what we're what we're what we mean when we say that is we mean um, we're referring to the drugs that, you know, for the most part were synthesized and discovered in the 20th century um or in the earlier part of the 20th century so you know everything from lsd to psilocybin to mdma dmt and so on some of these are naturally occurring some of them are um are you know synthetic versions of naturally occurring compounds or are you know totally novel compounds but they're not point is they're not anymore so they they've been in the public domain for you know, for for many, many decades at this point. And I think it makes sense that those were the drugs that really the the key kind of researchers and the not for profits um, focused on at the beginning uh, to to really kind of prove to regulators that there's a a role for these drugs. Um, Our point of view, which was quite a bit different than others when we started was that um, we really took like a pharma view of the, how this market would develop. And our view was that the first generation drugs are a really good proof of concept, but that there are some opportunities to improve on them. We felt that could be improved on in terms of things like duration or safety or predictability. Um, and, and that also, um, you know, for pharma to really be involved, they would view those first generation drugs as as a proof of concept, but they would want to bring new drugs to market that were that were novel chemically, so that hadn't existed before, and so that they could have really strong um, intellectual property rights. Intellectual property rights are, are really everything. Everything. It's 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 an essential for for big pharma you know there is a we all know there's a there's a big you know generic vast generic drug market but the the big pharmas who we think of as being big pharma they don't start with drugs that are generic they start with new drugs that have you know 20 year plus um patent lives to them and that are protectable so so that was our view is that that the market would ultimately you know head in the direction of of second and third generation drugs. So James, what are your expectations for your company and the psychedelic space in general this year? Biotech and pharma are, you know, essential parts of the global capital markets and and essential parts of the economy in modern life. So they will recover. Um, It's just a matter of, of time. 
But I think what's going to continue to happen is that the, the, the science and the programs are going to move forward. So in, in the next, you know, 12 to 24 months, you're going to have the first, first generation drug get full FDA approval in all likelihood. So MDMA is going to get approval. Psilocybin is going to come a, a little bit, you know, behind that, but you'll, we'll start to have more information and um, we'll start to get a better impression of what the, what the medical psychedelic world looks like will look like in practice, right? Because this is, there's, there's still questions that need to get answered around, you know, insurance coverage, treatment models, specialized clinics, therapists, that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll, st- well as MDMA gets approved, that's that, that stuff is going to kind of start to come together on the ground and you actually will have people going to, um, into, you know, clinics and, and undergoing, you know, psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. So I think that's really exciting. And then, you know, for mindset in particular, um, especially, you know, we're going to have, you know, at least one drug in, uh, starting in, in clinical trials with MSP 1014, which is our most advanced drug outside of our, the Otsuka collaboration. We've gotten some clearance, um, or guidance from the UK regulator that what they're going to, uh, likely will allow us to take the drug right into a phase, essentially a phase two trial. So it'll be on a really expedited, you know, pathway, that will make it one of the most advanced next generation drugs, uh, you know, in the market. And then, you know, hoping to um, be moving our lead from our family to, you know, forward and, and filing um, an IND application, uh, hopefully, you know, and not not too, too long, potentially 2023. So really exciting year for Mindset, really now establishing itself as a, as a clinical company, and and making that big kind of value inflection leap forward. Thanks again, James. We really enjoy your insight. 